let us open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. This is a moment Jesus is knocking at the door of our hearts. As he said he would do, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand and I knock at the door of your heart. If you open the door to me, I will come in. I will make your life a celebration. The literal translation is, I will dine with you. But that, in the scriptural language, means a celebration. The promises the Lord will make a life a celebration. But perhaps a life is not a celebration. A family life is not a celebration. A personal life is not a celebration. A lot of anger, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sin, a life indeed is not a celebration. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit of Jesus into our hearts. The Spirit filling our hearts with great joy to make our life a celebration. Let's keep our hands open in front of us. And that's a sign we keep our hearts open to God. For God to flow in, to send the Holy Spirit into us, making our lives a celebration, taking away all the sorrow, all the guilt, all the sin, all the anger, and enabling us to rejoice. As St. Paul said, Philippians 4, 4, rejoice. And again I say, rejoice in your union with the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit unites us with Jesus that we are able to rejoice. Let us sing together, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Jesus, 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 
Jesus. We lift your name. Jesus. We call Jesus. upon your name. Jesus. That mighty name. Jesus. That glorious name. Jesus. That glorious Jesus. name. Jesus. The powerful Jesus. name. The powerful Jesus. name. Jesus. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, we are come together for an inner healing retreat what are we expecting from this retreat we are expecting for the fulfillment of a promise of Jesus a promise Jesus gave us when Jesus took a title to himself, the favorite title of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The most favorite title of Jesus. Shall we say praise the Lord for that? Hallelujah. 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 I am the good shepherd. It is more than a title. It is a promise. Promise what Jesus would do to us, to every one of us. Jesus said, I will come in search of my wounded sheep. I will come in search of my wounded sheep. In the moments, in the moments when we are wounded, Jesus, the good shepherd, would come in search of us. He will pick us up and hold us close to his heart. And he will take us home and bind up our wounds and heal us. And what are the wounds Jesus is speaking about? All our wounds. Of course, the wounds of our body are easily healed. But not so the wounds of our heart. What are the wounds of our heart? The wounds of our heart are the shocks and bruises, the wounds that are inflicted to our emotional life. These are the wounds of our heart. The shocks and the wounds inflicted to our heart, to our emotional life, the wounds of our heart. Let me explain to you, my dear sisters and brothers, 
these shocks, these wounds of our heart. The shocks and wounds are inflicted to our hearts because of our sin. When God created us, we were created into paradise. And everything was beautiful. Our relationship with our God, our relationship with each other. The poet so beautifully speaks about the life in paradise. God would come down and go for a walk with Adam and Eve. Everything was in right order. Our relationship of love between God and man, between Adam and Eve. When God created Eve and brought to Adam, Adam accepted Eve, the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bone. There was perfect harmony between God and man, between Adam and Eve, and between Adam and the universe. The Bible tells us, God asked Adam to name the animals. The name Adam gave, Adam gave to the animals was the name of the animals. To name the animals means man had authority over the animals and the trees and the plants of the universe. Everything in perfect harmony. And when was that harmony was lost? That harmony was lost with sin. Man rebelled. Man rebelled against God. Man opted for a paradise that God did not offer. Offered by Satan. And Satan offered a paradise that God did not offer. And man reached out for the paradise, rejecting the paradise of God. And with that, all the harmony was lost. Man rejected God. Man rejected the woman. After sin, what did Adam say? The woman you gave me. The relationship between man and the woman was ruptured. And the relationship between man and and the universe was also broken and everything was lost. With that, with that, there was also a breakdown, a rupture in the human nature. And that's how the human nature was wounded. Let me explain that to you from the Bible. When man committed a sin, God came calling, Adam, where are you? And that was an approach of God. God came calling, Adam, where are you? You know what Adam said? Two things Adam said. Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, two things Adam said. Adam said, Oh God, I'm hiding because I'm naked 
and afraid i am hiding because i am naked and i am afraid what is nakedness nakedness in the bible is not a mere lack of clothes even before sin adam was naked wasn't he nakedness in the bible means shame i am ashamed of myself that's what adam said i am ashamed of myself i lost my standing with you how can i ever look at you how can i ever come before you i have lost my self esteem i cannot even look at your face anymore and that's why i am hiding i lost my self respect i lost my rootedness in you i have lost myself i'm naked i am ashamed of myself i am guilty the first effect of sin is guilt the emotional stress guilt the first emotional consequence of sin is guilt shame loss of self esteem and then fear i'm afraid adam said i'm afraid why afraid when are we afraid i'm afraid when i realize i have no defenses adam said i don't belong any more to anyone i don't belong any more to anyone the rootedness of adam was in god he felt distant from god i don't belong to god anymore i'm lonely i feel abandoned i feel alone i lost my bearings i'm afraid so two things two emotional stresses that sin brought about shame and fear the third consequence of sin the distance adam felt from god and he felt even from eve when god asked why did you eat of that fruit what did adam say a oh god not i but the woman you gave me adam began to blame eve earlier it was different she was mine adam had said she's mine the flesh of my flesh the bone of my bone and i felt so one with eve not anymore and i felt distant from eve and that distance i had felt from eve became much wider in the next generation in the next generation cain and abel cain felt much more distant cain felt a terrible jealousy to abel abel's sacrifice was accepted by god and cain felt angry that anger became so terrible cain killed abel a distance a distance that became so terrible cain became angry and cain 
hated Abel. The third consequence of sin, anger. And God asked, God asked Cain. Genesis chapter 4, Genesis chapter 4, verse 6, Cain asked, God asked Cain, Cain, why are you so angry and dejected? Dejected. That's the fourth consequence of sin. Dejected sorrow. Despair. Despair. Sorrow and despair. Cain was so sad, so broken, so dejected. So many friends, we spoke about four emotional stresses. We spoke about first guilt and shame. Then we spoke about what? Fear. Third, we spoke about anger and hatred and, and sorrow and despair. Four basic emotional stresses of our mind. Psychologists today, modern psychologists will tell us these are the four basic emotional problems of our life. All the other emotional stresses can be classified into these four emotional consequences. Emotional stresses, emotional complexes, inferiority, and sadness, and suicidal tendencies, and whatever other emotional problems we have, all our emotional problems can be classified into these four basic emotional problems of our life. Let me explain to you these four emotional problems of our life. You know why? What Jesus is going to do is to come into every such area of our life and heal us. Heal us. These emotional problems have come to us from our childhood. Not only from our childhood, even from the first moment of our conception in the womb of our mothers. You know, the church teaches us, and all the scientists would agree, we were a human being, not only from the moment we were born, but from the moment we were conceived in the womb of our mothers. From that moment, we were a human being able to feel, able to feel. And in those moments, if we were accepted, if we were encouraged, if we were respected, we would have grown up as very positive individuals. What do I mean by positive, happy, cheerful, optimistic individuals? From that moment to this day, if we were discouraged, unaccepted, and abandoned, then we would have grown up as very negative individuals. Negative meaning unhappy, criticizing, finding fault with others, and unable to perform in life. 